The Long Haul Podcast, America's Irish Voice. Interviews with inspiring immigrants, renowned Irish personalities, and discussions on all things Irish America. Presented by Michael Dorgan. Our next interview as we build towards the New York Leitrim game Saturday is with former Dublin footballer Shane Carty, who joins the New York panel this year while commuting from Boston. Carty brings a ton of experience to the New York fold, being a multiple All-Ireland winner with Dublin and he has also won an All-Ireland club winner's medal with his home club, St Vincent's. Today, Carty plays his football with Donegal Boston and interestingly enough, Saturday will not be the first time he togs out in a New York senior jersey. Carty made his inter-county debut with the Exiles back in 2009 at the age of 17 when New York lost out to Mayo. Carty spent most of his childhood living in New York, which he touches upon in this interview. Stay tuned for our final pre-match interview for the big game Saturday, and it's one you don't want to miss with New York manager Johnny McGinney. If you like what you hear, why not share these podcasts with your friends and family? And don't forget, we'll have a full match report of the game on the longhaulpodcast.com on Sunday. Shane, thanks for coming on the podcast. Um, you have a, a strange routine this year to play with New York. Uh, tell us about it. Yeah, I'm, uh, so I live in Boston. I've been there the last two years. And um, I leave to get down to train. And on a Thursday, I leave, at, leave the office about half one um, for a flight at half two. And then into Westchester Airport. Um, get down around four or five of the same fella. Actually, the taxi man is at Listowel Taxi Services. So <laughs> we have a good old chat for about half an hour down the road to Yonkers. Um, and then uh, come down for training at half seven, yeah. And so, like, what, are you here for the Sunday mornings as well? Yeah, so then I'll stay Thursday night, Friday, train either Saturday or Sunday, and then back up Sunday afternoon and get a flight down back up the road. And how long have you been doing that? Since uh, January? Since, yeah, the end of January. I've been, uh, myself and a couple of lads up in Boston, we're training away, um, kind of from, from early, from late December, early January, uh, putting the mileage on the, on the legs, trying to get back fit, and then it was coming down from the end of January, yeah. Um, so um, tell me, you're playing with Donny Gall up in uh, Boston, aren't you? Tell me, tell us about uh, how long you've been out in uh, in, in America since uh, you left the, the Dublin panel. Yeah, so uh, it's funny. I, I played with New York in 2009. I was 17. I actually made my debut in against Mayo. Oh, um, we got hammered. Yeah, it was the same day Aidan O'Shea made his debut. But uh, a little pub quiz there. <laughs> <if you. laughs> but um, and then went back to Dublin um, when I was 18 and. Um, was playing with Vincent's. We won the All Ireland 2013, 2014, March. Yeah. Got called in for a bit in 2014, um, and then 2016, 2017. One was lucky enough to be part of that great Dublin team that won six in a row. Um, and then myself and Dermot Connolly came over in 2018 uh, for the summer, just as a, yeah. as a change. And um, we went to Donegal, Boston. And in fairness, everyone up there was great, and I've, I've made lifelong friends now. And uh, We've, we've won three championships and we've been very competitive. We lost in the final last year, a bit unlucky. But, um, yeah, so I really enjoy Boston as well. What, um, what inspired you to come out this year with New York? Yeah, like um, when I originally spoke with Johnny, I could just hear the, the passion that he had. Um, I could hear that he had a big buy-in from all the players. Um, and then, obviously, I started my career with New York and I always kind of, in the back of my head, felt like I wanted to finish the intercounty career with New York. So, um he he was very you know accommodating and and the setup everyone has here is as professional as you can get. Yeah. Uh, so and then I'm, I I met Johnny Glynn. He picked me up from the airport. I, I remember it, and we just straight away hit it off, and the two of us got on very well. And so again, like that's what's great about the GA. It just brings people together. Um, that's what sport does. So uh, I'm delighted to be a part of the team, and and everyone has been very welcoming in. So I'm um, just looking forward to Saturday now. Uh, tell me, where have you been playing? Like, Obviously, you haven't had any um, actual competitive games over the last couple of weeks. Where where have you been playing in the, the training games? Yeah, anywhere up front midfield, anywhere in the middle. Um, just trying to get on the ball and try and make things happen and help my teammates. That's basically like you're playing anywhere, really. Yeah. Were you born in America? No, I was born in Dublin, but I grew up, I'd say, from uh, the age of 3 to 18. All right. So, yeah, so I went to school here and uh, went to prep up the road and then... Uh, Go through your, uh, your your American years in New York from three to 80, 18 and uh, where did you live? And you were saying there where you live. Yonkers there. My, my dad um, has a big construction business. Um, he's a general. Plug it. Yeah, he's a uh, <laughs> <laughs> Mark Hardy Construction Services. <laughs> uh, 
Um, so look, he, he's not a big GA man himself, but he's okay. big into discipline and sport, and and he instilled instilled those um, those habits and those principles that I brought to the GA to football. Um, so yeah, I was in Yonkers, went to uh, St Anne's School there, and then went to Iona Prep, and then I actually went back to DCU then to go to college. Uh, lives with my nana in Rohini and um, done four years as bachelor's and then uh, done my master's in DCU. Um, what did you study? Business studies and then uh, done my master's in business strategy. Again, like just the football was so helpful for that. Um, and yeah, it, it all just kind of found a place. Everything really worked out well. What do you work at up in Dublin? So I'm in, in Boston, in, in finance for commercial real estate. Um, yeah. Absolutely love it. I'm lucky that I've got a great team there as well. There's there's four Irish guys and, and four Americans, so there's a lot of a lot of banter back yeah. and forth, as you can imagine. But uh, Finance Boston is the name of the company, and basically we work for. Um, finance and development projects for all the construction going on in, in Boston. All right, okay. And so, what's your work situation then? When you're, are you doing remote stuff yeah, here? So like, I'm, I'm pretty much Monday to Thursday in the office, and then um, the Friday I work from home. And in fairness, like my boss Fergal is brilliant. He's very accommodating. He's again not a GA man, but understands the importance of uh, of the sport and, and how it can bring people together. So. Um, yeah, it's kind of like just get your stuff done and away you go, you know. Has it all been working out? Has it been hard? Yeah, it, it, no. sounds, it sounds complicated. It, it's honestly, I've got a great routine. Um, it's actually worked out quite well. Like, like I said, the, I've got it down to like, you know, getting the Uber at the same time. And yeah. it just worked. Thankfully, the weather's been great. There's been like one or two times yeah. I've got delayed, but no snowstorms or anything like that. That was always the fear, kind of yeah. February or... You're going to get a snowstorm, but thank God we haven't. Yeah, exactly. Uh, you mentioned there that Johnny Glenn, did he meet you initially and did he talk to you? Did he convince you to, to, to talk out? Yeah, no, well, it was it was Johnny McGinney I spoke to over the phone. Um, and then uh, when I came down, it was Johnny right. Johnny Glenn picked me up. And um, like all the lads have been brilliant in fairness, but uh, we've got a good connection in the group and a very strong group. So just yeah. looking forward to Saturday. And uh, did, did you reach out to them or did they reach out to you? Or, and you were training last year, of course. So yeah, for- I, I, it's funny how it kind of worked out. It was one of the lads in the squad just kind of gave me a text on Instagram and was like, was any interest in, yeah, in yeah. playing with New York? And... Uh, I said, yeah, like if I can, if there's a chance that I can still play with my club in Boston because, like, I have a, a great connection with with the club up there. So I always wanted to stay with with Donegal. But um, as it worked out, then they they figured out that because New York was originally my first home county, that I could declare back for them. Yeah. Um, so. Yeah, it just worked out nicely. I was trying to figure out how how it all came about. I was like, how how is he doing that? Yeah, I, I know uh, there was there was a lot of st- stuff in the background. McGinney and, and Joan Henshey were sorting it out, so I just kind of stood around and let them sort it out. And so, how have you been getting on? I know Johnny Glynn is the captain this year. Uh, I like, I, I know Johnny. You'd go through a wall for Johnny. Um, I no doubt he's had a big impact on the team this year. But how's how's everything been going for the last three months? Yeah, it's, it's, it's honestly it's as good as you can get. Um, like there's a great group there, and then we've like Adrian Varley as well, and he's he's an excellent player. So I'd say like we've we've more experienced players is is my belief yeah. over it that, like than any before any New York team before. So we're kind of playing on that, um, and then look like the training. You know you don't have games, so we just have to work around that, and you know that from the start. So yeah. at least you're trying to build every Sunday in-house game like it's if it's a league game at home you know so you're trying to do the best you can really is it just a matter of accepting that there's no game and maybe use it to your advantage the way that uh, Leitrim just don't know what kind of a team is going to talk out Saturday that's it that's it exactly yeah like they they don't know who's I'm sure they know like the players but they don't know where it's going to set up they haven't seen I'm sure they watched some of the game from from last year but um, it's a different team so um, there's only so much you can get from that. Like, yeah, I looking at the panel on paper this year it looks ultra competitive. It looks like a stronger panel last year. Uh, there's at least five or six new fellas in there. Very competitive to even get on the 26. I'd say. Yeah, yeah. There's a lot of lads fighting for spots to get into the 15 to represent the jersey, and then the same to get lads trying to fight to get into the 26. So um, it's very competitive. Yeah. So you've roots obviously in New York, and of course you know the the history that stands before us. Uh, if we win Saturday, how big of a boost do you think, and how important? is to get that first win uh, in the Connacht Senior Championship for New York. Yeah, it's it's <clears throat> it's massive for the community here like that have been putting, you know, so much time and effort into not just the New York senior team but like underage failures. Um, like realistically that's the heartbeat of the GA is underage in the club system and I think New York have probably set the standard for that internationally. Um, they probably got the best underage uh, setup 
that, that I can imagine. Yeah. Um, so it's great for all those lads to give them something to look forward to. Yeah. So like that, maybe one day you can go back and, and play in Crow Park or, or anything yeah. like that. But that was always my dream. But hopefully we can kind of inspire younger kids around to, to get involved yeah. in the game and that's all you really want. Yeah, do you think is there much difference training with Dublin and New York the way things are set up here? Obviously, it's different. People are travelling a lot more. What's the the big differences? Do you, uh... yeah, like we're we're playing games every week. Um, obviously, in Dublin, whether it's club or county level, and you've got guys coming and going the whole time. Whereas here, um, obviously, you've kind of got your base of forty, but you can use that to your advantage as well. So. Um, I think we're in a we're in a very good position where we are now. So I'm yeah. just looking forward to it. There's an an air of quite a confidence around the place at least by supporters I know the lads have been yourselves you've been keep, keeping it low key um, are you going in there with confidence Saturday and expecting that you can can get it over the line get that win oh absolutely like that's that's always the goal but you know our, our whole thing is not focusing on, on the outcome of beating Leitrim uh, at the end of the day they're, they're an inter-county team no different than us but every single player there has two arms and two legs yeah. and, and that's all we're going to be playing off is, is giving them the intensity from the start and hopefully we can maintain that Okay. Uh, just finally did you uh, after you left the Dublin panel I think that was Irene that you lost a bit of love for the game is that true and did you um, no look, I was still pl- playing with, with Donegal Boston but obviously when you're when you're out of the, the inter-county setup, it's very it's a very different game. Um, like your life revolves around, um, you know, especially when you're with a team like Dublin. Like you're you're eating, breathing, and sleeping it. Yeah. So y- everything you do is around, you know, trying to make sure the body's right for training and trying to make sure that you can perform in in, in training, let alone in a game. Yeah. Um, and it's just so competitive. And that's that's what you want, though. That's what you that's why you play the game. So yeah, like when you step out of that. You kind of get a new lease of life. There's other things, there's other priorities, like very focused on work and you know building my own career up in Boston as well. So all those kind of things definitely come in. But it's great that you have the GA for uh, you know some sort of release and brings everyone together and you get some sort of training and it's just that that's a good buzz that you need in your life. Uh, do you know much about Leitrim? Have you been watching much of them this year? Yeah, obviously we've been following their league games, um, watching a bit of tape on them. They look, they look very strong in a lot of their games. They were probably unlucky to not get promoted, um, but like I think they're definitely beatable. You know, I know they're going to be very well coached. Andy Morns, obviously, he was a f- fantastic player, so he's going to have them well set up. I know they're coached Luke Bree very well. He used to live with, with, with me back in Dublin, so um, yeah. I, I know they're going to be well coached. They're going to be well set up. I have no doubt they're going to be very professional and they're going to be buzzing on Saturday, but hopefully we can match that. And finally, of course, the lads were slagging us there before we came on. Um, big news in Dublin is Cluxton is back. What, what are your thoughts on that? Yeah, well, he never left in mind. Like, he never actually <laughs> retired. So uh, That's true, yeah. That's yeah. The, the type of character he is, I think he only adds to that Dublin team. Like, look, the, the amount of quality that's, that's always been in Dublin. Um, they might have lost a little bit the last two years, but I'd say him coming back, I wouldn't rule them out just yet, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you're bringing your own flavour to this team, your own experience. What, can you, what, what, what do you think you've been bringing to the panel? I'm probably one of the oldest players <laughs> is probably what I'm bringing. <laughs> Mikey there is 39 you can see that I see that yeah yeah no I'm 31 so I'm not that old now Jeez. but um, yeah. Yeah, like, yeah look it's, like, Johnny Glynn is, he's, he's got an all iron and hurling like, so yeah. there's, there's lads that have experience all across yeah. so it's just trying to you know how can I add to what's already very strong that, that was my whole thing it's, it's never really about any one individual it's only about how you can add to that group and, and it's all about the group and that's trying what we're trying to build here right. Shane thanks a million mate Cheers, man. Oh, you New York girls, can you dance the polka too? Stay tuned for our final pre-match interview for the big game Saturday, and it's one you don't want to miss with New York manager Johnny McGinney. If you like what you hear, why not share these podcasts with your friends and family? And don't forget, we'll have a full match report of the game on the longhaulpodcast.com on Sunday. The liquor was so awful strong, my head went round and round to me away. You Santi, my dear Annie, oh you New York girls, can you dance the polka to me way? You Santi, my dear Annie, oh you New York girls, can you dance the polka?